Hello everyone and welcome to an incredible game that features a queen sacrifice in merely 15 moves uh, and the opening is of course the London system. Now I'm sure you guys uh, either you play the London system or you uh, hate playing against the London system. Either way uh, you need to see this game and you need to know it uh, because the moves that are played here are fairly standard moves and you... Uh, could easily encounter them in even Bullet or Blitz games online. So you should definitely know this. Uh, it was played in a match uh, in the Mitropa Cup in a match between Slovakia and Croatia. Uh, representing Slovakia on board one is Jerguš Pehač. We've seen a couple of his games already on the channel. Uh, and representing Croatia on board one, Mladen Palac. So uh, let's dive straight into it. It's um, uh, it's definitely something that you should know. So here uh, Jerguš opens with d4. We have knight to f6, knight to f3, d5 and now bishop to f4 the london system is on the board and if you're wondering uh why i'm not showing a world chess championship game today is because today is a rest day if you guys remember we have two games of play then one rest day then two games of play then rest day then two uh, and so on and so on so uh tomorrow we will be having a world chess championship game and here uh, c6 is the uh, pretty, pretty standard reply, e6 is the top move, c5 is the uh, second most popular option, so this is all very nice. We have e3 and now pawn to e6. Now this is quite rare, usually uh, players uh, go knight to the c6 or queen to b6, but e6 is also uh, very much played, even though much less, uh, but it has been played against uh, Ding Liren, Caruana, Karyakin played it, um, Nakamura played it. Uh, interestingly, they all played it against Magnus Carlsen, as Magnus is also a fan of the London system. Uh, c3 and now knight b to d7 again knight to c6 the more popular option knight b to d7 fairly rare knight b to d2 and now bishop to e7 so why doing the standard the setup the the pawns and dark squares so you, your light square bishop can uh, go in between the bishop on f4 the knight will come to e5 uh, you will castle king side you will push f4 you will bring the rook over to f3 to g3 or to h3 and create a sort of a, a standard attacking pattern and black needs to figure out a way how to defend against all of this so knight to e5 and usually you don't want to trade uh, when white plays knight to e5 but here it's actually the best move knight captures on e5 and now bishop captures on e5 d captures would be uh, perhaps a bit too ambitious because after let's say knight to d7 you can go bishop to d3 and yes your position looks very nice even the queen can come to h5 but black will just ignore you black will not castle king side let's say knight to f3 you need to defend the pawn here rook to b8 then b5 is coming so uh, I don't know, it seems like a, a, like a very offbeat way to, to play this. So bishop captures on e5 makes more sense here. We have bishop to d7 and now uh, there are a couple of games where bishop to d3 was played. But here we have pawn to a4 just stopping b5. And it is now as of move 9 that we have a completely new game. Uh, so bishop to c6, the bishop now assumes this diagonal, and the bishop to d3 by Yergush. We have bishop to d6, the palace could also castle here, he decides to trade off the dark square bishops first, but now as we advertised pawn to f4. So you know that if uh, bishops are traded, you're going to play f captures on e5, and now let's say knight to e4, queen to g4, and already you are, uh, you are facing some difficulties here. The knight is attacked three times, the g7 pawn is hanging, so it's not, it's not ideal. So instead, after f4, palace just castled here and here a Yergush also castles. Mladen goes uh, queen to e7, connects the rooks and now rook to f3. So a standard rook lift um, you, you might see in a London system, nothing odd here. And here your spidey sense should really uh, go off. Uh, like th there is danger here and you should play something like knight to e4 and okay, uh, white could play something like rook to h3, but you're gonna trade, let's say bishop captures, f captures, you're gonna play h6 and everything is perfectly fine. If white ever trades, this pawn is uh, most of the times never a problem here it's a very very hard for white to actually go after it and it will uh, stifle blacks uh, white's pieces a little bit so instead after rook to f3 g6 was played and yes this is only move 13 and here rook to h3 getting the rook into the attack and here you, you if your spidey sense wasn't going off on the previous move now it should be just screaming uh, because here bishop captures on e5 is a must however knight to d7 was played now threatening to pick up the bishop with the knight but now the com the game is completely winning for Yergush so feel free to pause the video and win the game uh, for Yergush uh, while I give you a couple of seconds 
So uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations on spotting this beautiful uh, queen sacrifice. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, it is, of course, queen, queen to h5. I'm even going to do it in slow motion because there is no defense against queen captures on h7. There, there's just nothing you can do. Oh, okay, the obvious uh, thing is that <laughs> we can capture the queen, uh, but it doesn't help. So congratulations to everyone who found this. I'm sure you're not even watching the video anymore. You're off to Lee Chess or Chess.com trying to pull this off. And I'm sure you're, you're going to be able to do it but if uh, g captures on h5 then rook to g3 check only one move for black queen g5 and this is now checkmate as the bishop controls the dark squares the rook delivers check and you might be wondering but what if we don't capture the queen but what else is there how do you defend against queen captures on h7 checkmate you could uh, uh you you could uh, let's say move the rook let's say you move the rook somewhere it doesn't help just queen captures on h7 and after king to f8 it's still checkmate queen to h8 or you could try uh pawn to f6 or pawn to f5 doesn't really matter okay now the black queen guards the h7 pawn but now bishop captures on d6 you just win a piece and again black has to resign yeah, again you can't capture back because of checkmate and if you capture uh the white queen then bishop captures queen attacks the rook and once the rook moves you're just gonna pick up the pawn and you are up a full bishop uh, as you can see uh, white has a dark square bishop uh, black does not so you are uh, you know just completely completely winning here so incredible as it is uh something like this can happen happen in a classical game between two grandmasters and uh, it's important to notice like I said even if you enjoy playing the London or you uh, have struggle or, or you're struggling to play against the London uh, this is something that you should know as it uh, definitely could happen to you but Queen to H5 such a classy way to end the game I'm very happy that I was able to show this game and uh, especially now on a rest day uh, for, from the World Chess Championship match. Uh, so yeah, uh, that's the game. Hope you guys uh, enjoyed it. Uh, I would like to thank Yaroslav Siembida, uh, Pio Cescali, uh, Philip Dennis, Seth Borgo and James Cashman for your contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching and I will see you soon continuing to check up on your wonderful suggestions such as this one uh, and whatever else happens in the chess world. So thank you all. I will see you soon and have an excellent rest of your day and go try and pull this off uh, I mean that, that, that is uh, why we are here uh, see you soon